All right, everybody, we're doing another video on our favorite YouTuber, Coach Blaha. <laughs> he says here, just saw a reel explaining why so many pro bodybuilders do partial reps. Oh my, I saw the same one too a bit ago. All right, let's review this video. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here today. I want to chat with you guys a little bit about something that I saw coming through my social media feed and I stopped and watched the reel um, and it was really kind of funny because it was one of those cases where the person was speaking the truth in terms of biomechanics but what they were saying is not what these bodybuilders do or even what he was then kind of showing in his reel as bodybuilders do you know he kind of pointed out that look people talk about the need for full range of motion or hypertrophy but you see all these pro bodybuilders doing partials you know and he tried to explain it as hey they're skipping the lockout but the funny thing is a lot of these pro bodybuilders you're seeing are skipping the bottom they're not just skipping the lockouts of movements does it really matter what these pro bodybuilders are skipping they're taking a huge amount of molecules to absorb more glycogen in their muscle that's all they're really doing okay cripes man you could look in ncbi there are different forms of hypertrophy hypertrophy can come in the form of inflammatory response it could be a gravitational loading unloading on the cell to get it to expand it can be grown through sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. What these bodybuilders are doing, they're, they're aiming for sarcoplasmic. It's the quickest, the fastest, and the most that could get your muscle to blow up. Protein, getting protein to build real muscle, protein on the myofibular is extremely difficult. Why is that? Because it's protein and protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown, which is extremely difficult. The bar is very high. And then you have something called myofibular growth. That could be even harder. So it's all the, it's all relative, man. I, jeepers. Like, so hypertrophy just means something's getting bigger. But what is making it get bigger? Like I said, it could be inflammatory response. It could even be uh, lactic acid buildup in the muscle. So let me get this straight. You get a lot of lactic acid buildup in your muscle. And your muscle looks bigger does that mean you grew a muscle or i got an inflammatory response inflammation where this these these molecules or chemicals they build up in the muscle and that inflammation can stay for some people for some people that inflammation can stay for a couple of days depending on the training that they're doing so yeah i mean <laughs> it's crazy to chase inf inflammatory muscles but whatever that's just going to accelerate aging and so all these other these all these other artificial things will just accelerate aging so you're wasting your time but anyways yeah what good are these partial reps who cares let's just go on with this. and he went into a long diatribe that again is actually true it is actually correct to say that you know the the research does kind of show that most of the muscle growth happens at the bottom part of movements so if a lot I love this. Most of the muscle growth happens at the bottom of the movement. So when you go to the bottom, the muscles grow. But from what? Lactic acid? Inflammatory response? What kind of growth is this? It can't be, it can't be muscle damage. How does a damage make a muscle grow? It's damaged. <laughs> How could at the bottom, if it gets damaged, it grew? How does it grow? In, in one second? It repairs and remodels in one second? Well, let me get this straight. What about protein synthesis needs, needs to exceed that breakdown? Does it exceed that breakdown in that one second at the bottom? See what I'm trying to explain to you? This is the phony shit that the, that the stupid fitness influencer coach, whatever business they pump out all the time. At the bottom of the rep, that's the growth. What the fuck are you talking about? You must be insane that your muscle could grow at a bottom rep. What? This is stupid. A lot of these guys are getting enough workload, enough volume, and maybe they're skipping lockouts, but they're they're working the bottom. Then uh, you know, biomechanically, this still works. Uh, a lot of the evidence would suggest that this is capable of causing maximum hypertrophy, and they're just not. Ah, uh, maximum hypertrophy, but what kind, Coach Greg? What I mean, Coach Greg, Coach Blah, what kind, man? You didn't tell us. Lactic acid? What is this? Is it, is it um, inflammatory response? 
What is this? Sarcoplasma? It can't be sarcoplasma. It can't happen that fast. So it must be the latter of the two, the two fake ones. It must be sarcoplasmic, maybe a gravitational loading unloading, or sarcoplasmic or lactic acid buildup. Either of those two. Because like you show your picture with some, I, I see you, you go, this is my calves with a pump. Show them without a pump. Wasting effort, you know, with shortened positions of muscles and they're sticking with lengthened positions. And, and again, this would be a true statement. Except that that's not what these pro bodybuilders do. A lot of these pro bodybuilders work the middle. And again, that will come over to people saying, well, they're chasing continual. Pro bodybuilders are looking for a cosmetic look because they compete on a stage and they'll do whatever it takes to get there. They don't care if it's filled with cotton in there or water or juice or orange juice or whatever. You understand me? Why do you think they inject synthol? Because they know it's all fake muscles. Keep cripes, man. Tension, but continual tension has never been really found to be a factor in muscle growth, has it? It hasn't. I mean, it does give you a good pump. Look at Kevin Lavroni when he went off his cycles. All these other guys, when they go off their cycle, they turn into ordinary men. I could show you so many things on the internet right now. One guy's off a cycle, and then he shows a picture next to him. He looks like an ordinary dude. He's he says I'm 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 stop taking steroids or something. It looks ordinary. He went back to an ordinary guy. You understand me? It's temporary enhancement. But maybe there is some data to suggest that uh, there is some correlation with pump and be, being a sign of certain types of fatigue, which uh, again... Some correlation with pump? <laughs> this is where he's coming out with the truth. Give me a break, man. It is. can be a positive sign that we may have, have had a productive set. And I don't want to uh, de deny that there is there is some evidence. Oh yes, you've had a productive pr a productive set, all right. You gain exactly what you wanted, man. Inflammatory response muscles, some lactic acid buildup in there. To that, and it's not un it's not unreasonable, okay. But the fact of the matter is, uh, a lot of these guys are, are skipping the, the very range of motion he's talking about. And here's kind of what I would suggest is the thing there. A lot of pro bodybuilders, and I've seen this said for a decade, even other certain uh, coaches have kind of said, look, a lot of pro bodybuilders, between their genetics and the just ridiculous, copious amounts of stuff they put into their body, would probably still look like bodybuilders if all they did was some jumping jacks. They, they probably, and again, there's some truth to that, if they just did some intense conditioning work, some burpees and jumping jacks, that would probably be enough to stimulate really good muscle growth on the enormous amount of stuff a lot of them take. Yeah, think about it. If they just do jumping jacks, they'll, they'll gain a lot of this phony muscle. How do you think they're gaining it? Through the pump, man. There, it, it's testosterone it doesn't it's not building muscle it's a it's a sex hormone so it's drawing a lot of this glycogen in the muscle and that's what they're getting they're getting sarcoplasmic hypertrophy muscles it's it's a known fact in trained people i have a section there in my community section and i can bring more of those kind of reports i just don't have time to look for all of them particularly given how genetically blessed some of these guys are for gaining muscle. They are genetically blessed for gaining sarcoplasmic muscle? No. They are, how should I put it, blessed financially to afford to buy a lot of these steroids. And of course, they're not fake, real ones, that they can glycogen load and get more sarcoplasmic hypertrophy muscles, fake muscles, yes. They're so blessed with money. If you have money, you too could build the same fake muscles. <laughs> like these bodybuilders on top of that uh that maybe how they train you'd be surprised doesn't matter as much as you think it does it yeah it doesn't matter you just said they did jumping jacks and they would get big too so there you go might make the difference between first and second place but it won't make the difference in necessarily in them being there oh the competition to them means a lot man i heard people say that they they would literally build muscle sitting on a sofa yeah Fake muscle, sarcoplasmic. They literally build muscle walking up a stairwell. Yeah, because they're getting the pump. Sarcoplasmic, hypertrophy. That pump, if you're getting that pump in the gym, if you're lifting, then that pump is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Now, on a carnivore diet, a natural protein diet, you would not get that pump. I'm telling you. You only get that pump 
because all of you are eating a herbivore diet, which is not your diet. You understand me? Is not a human diet. So you are trying to eat grass with the cow eats. You're trying to build muscle eating grass. And that doesn't work in humans. The only muscle you'll build is sarcoplasmic muscles, fake muscles. Because I got a pump, like, like Coach Blaha, that picture in his community section of his calves with three pumps. <laughs> how bad some of them train that does appear to be a degree of truth because usually what, what I have observed over the decades with those guys usually the better they train the less stuff they can get away with taking and still get just as good a results and, and no kidding because it's sarcoplasmic hypertrophy it's based on consuming carbohydrates or complex carbohydrates and they're taking a steroid and it's absorbing it a hell of a lot. Look, you need very little a steroid if you want to build these sarcoplasmic phony muscles like these power lifters and bodybuilders and everybody out there. Now, if you want to enhance your performance to lift a heavy weight, so it binding with the androgen receptor, which is responsible for strength, well, that's a different story. You might may want to take more powerful anabolic or steroids so you could be enhanced to lift heavier stuff. I told you. These hormones are very powerful. It, it, well, what do you call that? When a woman, when a when a woman is in danger, her a car fell on her son. What does she do? She gets an adrenaline rush of a hormone. She's able to lift the car. Does that mean she's strong? No. It's just she got a temporary strength in the moment. It's a flight or fight type of thing. Get it? And that actually will keep them in the game longer. Obviously, obviously, if you can take less stuff. Your body's gonna lie. They do. The, the old bodybuilders, they didn't need to take that much. You say, well, they were into an aesthetic look. They weren't, look to get, they weren't looking to get mass, like huge and massive. Well, they weren't eating that much either, and they weren't taking that much steroids. The people today, you'll say, well, they take more steroids. Because the steroid stops working, it rapidly adapts, like your muscles. They rapidly adapt. There's something called repeat about effect phenomena. That happens with steroids as well. It's applied to everything in science. And so it stops working. So what do you have to do? You gotta take more of it. Do more of something or take more of something to get those steroids to keep working. And it really is just getting sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. No muscle can get that big. Even protein synthesis exceeds that breakdown. Do you understand me? It is extremely difficult on the bar. You have to keep trying to get that progenitor to donate its nuclei because they synthesize protein. They have nothing to do with sarcoplasmic. To push that myonuclear domain size limit. That's why it says it has a ceiling limit during hypertrophic process where the satellite cell is beyond, beyond, where it could donate extra nuclei to that domain to further any more growth. That's why everybody's stuck on newbie gains at the gym. You understand me? It is a very particular technique to pu push that domain and you need a lot of money and protein to do that. That's a lot longer. So, so again, they have more time to achieve the results because they can do it longer. Uh, better muscle maturity, more time to, to lay down lots of extra tissue protein. Makes, it makes sense, right? But again, no, there's no tissue, nothing in there. Stop lying. A lot of them get around it just by taking stuff. And then they're still just training hard. As long as they're training hard, they're still getting a lot of volume and tension and pump. Okay. Yeah. So that That's explanation. Tension and pump. They're getting a pump. They're pumping glycogen into the muscle. That's the whole basis. Tension would be true if that's how they train, but they, they, they don't. You don't get pumps on, on protein. You get zero pumps on protein. Pure protein, high nutrient diet. They oftentimes are just doing the middle. But I do like the idea that someone was willing to point that out and to say, well, it's not that full range of motion itself has been found to be enormously always important for maximizing muscle growth. It's, it's that, that. You don't need a full range of motion for nothing to maximize sarcoplasmic hypertrophy muscle growth. No, you don't. A stretch position really appears to be the double lock particularly on certain movements, that lunges, that's... Why do you think I equate all these people as fake natties? If you're chasing something artificial, you're fake. 
even this, doing sarcoplasmic hypertrophy training, infl inflammatory response and all that, whatever, it's all fake. Lactic acid in my muscle, it's all fake training. They're fake natties because they never built real muscle. Stretch at the bottom. It's really where the money is. Yeah. Builders, like pro well, bodybuilders, are notorious for not... I see people on their channel jumping. They can't wait to jump on the scale, and they go, look, uh, 220, 230, 240. Then they go, look, 250, 260, boom. Yeah, man. Then next thing I know, they're all the way back to 225. <laughs> because all of it was fake. They just were gaining weight. And what is the most majority of weight that you're gaining? Sarcoplasmic, because they're eating the wrong diet. Try and do that on a protein diet. Here's another thing. Sugar is an enhanced performing drug. These carbohydrates, they convert to sugar, sugar. There's sugar in that crap. It's all man-made stuff. So it's an enhanced performing drug as well. And everybody's gonna say, well, I'm a, I, I got strength and I'm super strong and I'm stronger than you. Try and do that on a pure carnivore diet. Lifting those heavy weights, you're gonna see how difficult the, the bar is extremely difficult because you are enhancing your, your performance artificially taking a drug called sugar. Sugar is not a, your natural diet. And it's, and it's a refined sugar is even stronger. It's in everything that you eat these days. Doing the stuff that they even preach themselves. You know, a lot of them do a lot of body things to talk about, oh, it's important to, to squeeze and contract and control, you know, but then they cheat. They're making it up because it's just fake muscles. That has nothing to do with real true myofibular growth. Swing and just do mid reps. It works a muscle hard. Anything that works a muscle hard, in other words, as long as they're training hard, is going to grow the holy hell out of it. Yeah, you train it, you, you could do anything and that muscle will grow through sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. What the hell are you talking about? Okay, as long as they're, so you take that stuff out of the equation, some differences. Although, again, hard work does tend to go a long way. No, hard work doesn't get you nowhere. Not in that business. Real hard work will get you to go somewhere, but it is extremely hard to build real muscle. I've seen the next one. Don't you think about that? Like, subscribe, support the channel. <laughs> yeah, uh, partial reps are going to build the muscle. See, I told you, this is all the phony shit that's out there, bro. See you later.